Goyim, the rabbis of the Talmud, they they were weren't just scholars, they were also holy people. So he had the power to, he brought him back to life. Rabba brought Reb Zayda back to life. The next year came around. Rabba invited Reb Zayda, he want to come again? And uh, Reb Zayda says, Loi b'chol shana v'shana misrachish nisa. We can't rely on miracles, so I don't want to come to your party. I'll go somewhere else. Um, so that, that was, so Rava's the, 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 the initial din of the Gemara. Rava, Rava lived around the year two seventy. So about a thousand years later, the Rishonim they have a three way machlokes, a three way dispute as to how to understand the words of. The, the, the Gemara. Um, I'm not going to say names because there's a whole bunch of different opinions with a bunch of different names. So w- one approach is that the Gemara brought the, the, the Rava said his initial den that a person should drink on Purim. The Gemara brought the story to show us that it's not such a good idea. Take it easy. Um, the halacha was cancelled out. A second approach was no. We see from the story that he invited him back to come and uh, have a party the next year. So obviously we don't assume that people are going to take it that far. And Rava said his halacha, that the person is obligated to drink, and that's it. And then there's a little bit of a in-between opinion, which says that, that no, the... Um, the uh, Rava said, "Is it then a person has to drink which is obviously a lot of l'chayim?" And the story was brought to tell you that you shouldn't drink that much, but a little bit still you should drink. Now the Shulchan Aruch, um, Rabbi Yisuf Cairo, his years were fourteen eighty-eight to fifteen seventy-five. So he was the base Yosef. He was actually he was kind of the um, the time where we went from the Rishonim to the Achreinim. So they say when he wrote his commentary, the base Yosef, we view him as a Rishon. When he wrote the Shulchan Aruch, he's, he's referred to as the Mechaber, the author. He wrote the base of the Shulchan Aruch. He's uh, he's he's from the first of the, first of the first there and. Uh, um, it's, uh, well, I want to show you the page a little bit. Um, okay, here we go. So you see a little bit of the Shulchan Aruch. Um, so we're now going to go and give you a little bit of a tour. The middle over here, so is the Mechaber and the Ramah. We'll get to their history in a second. Mechaber, that's the main Shulchan Aruch. And then in the Rashi letters, you have the Ramah. And on the side over here to the right, you have the Taz. And then you have the Mug and Avram. And then on the side over here, all the way, all the way in the corner, you have the Yad Ephraim. So we're going to talk about those commentaries. So the Mechaber, and his Shulchan Aruch, I mentioned that there's a three-way Machlaikis. He seems to go like the first opinion that says that no person's chayif to drink. That's it. Rabbi and Abzeda took it a little too far. They went beyond that, but uh, we don't assume that people are going to go that far. The Ramah, so that's the Mechaber, Rabbi Yisif Cairo. The Ramah, who lived a little later, the Ramah of Moshe Isilish, his years were 1520 to 1572. He says that a per- he takes that third opinion. He says a person should drink a little bit. But he shouldn't go all the way out. And he suggests you should drink a little bit until you become a little dr- dr- drowsy and you fall asleep. And kind of... That, 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 that's the approach of the Ramah. Um, now, what, what begs to be understood is what's this concept of mixing Arur Hamman and Baruch Mardachai? I mean... We want to say that Mardachai should be cursed, God forbid, and Haman should be blessed. What's that idea? So I'm going to quote to you three explanations, three of the earliest explanations that I found. Um, the first comes from the Mogan Avram, which I showed you on the side. 
He's the basic comment, one of the basic commentaries on the Shulchan Aruch. Um, his name was Avram Gambiner. His years were 1635 to 1682. He says, Orer Homan Mordechai is the amount you should drink um, that you shouldn't be able to calculate that Orer Homan has the same gematria, numerical value, as Baruch Mordechai. So, not knowing the difference in Orer Homan and Baruch Mordechai is that you shouldn't know that they're be able to calculate that they have the same gematria. The Taz, the Turei Zov, also one of the basic commentaries on the Shulchan Aruch, Harav David Halevi, Siegel, years were 1586 to 1667. So he says that, this is a little bit of a, beyond the simple level of interpretation, he says that, Baruch Mar Haman represents not. Ur Haman represents the miracle that the Jewish people as a whole were saved from the curse of Haman. Baruch Mardechai represents the miracle that happened beyond the Jewish people being saved, that Mardechai became the the, the, the vice president. So there were two miracles. So Ur Haman and Baruch Mardechai is not that we should mix up, you know. Blessed Mardachai and cursed Haman. No. Order Haman refers to the miracle that happened to the Jewish people. And Baruch Mardachai represents the miracle that happened to Mardachai beyond that miracle. So we're supposed to drink to celebrate these two concepts. Not just that we were our, our lives were saved, but also more than that, there was the that there was the um Baruch Mardachai, the, the Jewish people were exalted, not just saved. Then the third third approach goes like this. This is this is attributed to the Yad Afrayim. Uh, he's not one of the basic commentaries, but in the in many of the editions of the Shulchan Aruch, he comes on the. He, he's one of the the commentaries that are there. His name was Reb Afrayim Margolis. His years were seventeen sixty two to eighteen twenty eight. So this Piddish is often attributed to the Svas Emes, the second Gerer Rebbe, which lived a hundred years later. But I recently saw it in the Yad Afrayim, which uh, probably the Svas Emes was not very big with Achreinim. So his interpretation is, not that we should mix up Cursed Haman. He says, mix, Cursed Haman is... We should, we, we're, Cursed Haman and Blessed Mordechai, it's not that we should mix them up. We should drink so much. Add, until... But before you reach that point, we don't want to obviously mix up Haman and Mardachai, but we want to drink so much until Adla Yoda, until before you reach that point, which is an interesting interpretation. So this is part one of the Adla Yoda, and hopefully next week we'll get the part two. We'll understand uh, the concept uh, according to the, uh, on a deeper level. L'chaim, happy Purim. Freilichem Purim. So we discussed in the previous video three explanations as to what's this concept of mixing Arur Haman and Baruch Mardachai. So I'm going to present a third explanation, L'shleim Asa'inin, to give you somewhat of a fuller picture. The Alter Rebbe says, Arar Haman represents a little bit of a bigger picture. Arar Haman is not just cursed be Haman. It's not just the um, the person Haman. Arar Haman represents excuse me, all the negative commandments, what you shouldn't do. Curse Haman, push away what you shouldn't do. Baruch Mardachai represents the 248 mitzvahs essay, the mitzvahs that you're supposed to do, the Baruch Haman, the good things. Order Baruch Mardachai. Order Haman represents the things that you're not supposed to do, the Lysa says. So I'm putting, we tap into a level of connection that we have with Hashem, which is beyond what we do. 
In other words, we connect Hashem normally through doing what He wants, doing mitzvahs, not doing Avedis, cursing Haman, blessing Mardachai, doing mitzvahs, and not doing Avedis. And put Him, we connect to the level of Hashem where He's connected to us not because of what we do, but because of what we are. So that's the not knowing the Orad Haman Baruch Mardachai, we're reaching that higher level. Now, okay, that, that, that's in regards to the Orad Haman Baruch Mardachai. Now, just as a as a side note, although it's very important to mention, the 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 the, the Poiskim seem to conclude, at least majority of the Poiskim seem to conclude that we don't we, we go like the opinion that we don't have to literally drink that much to not know the difference in Arad Haman Baruch Mardachai. Um, and for sure someone that's driving should not, even if you have one l'chaim, the law of the land is the law of Taira, Dimed HaMalchus Adina, you should not uh, drive. Um, moreover, it's interesting to note that there's one Yontif, the one Yontif in, 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 in Taira Ar and Lakutei Taira, the main one, the the the, 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 the svarim of the Alter Rebbe, the one yontif that has the most mamorim is put in. Put him as thirty nine pages of mamorim. Um, it's almost double all the other yontif put together. Um, because you know when you learn chassidus, you're able to have an out of body experience. So that everyone's mentioned in a letter to someone that nowadays we don't have to say, we don't have to drink as much mashka because we have so much chassidus. Um, and so it could be that's why I'm putting there's so many mamorim um, in, in, in Tadar. Moreover, nowadays because we're dealing with the outside world, we're doing hafatza and we're doing shlichus and outreach. So the Rebbe said that we have, we have to be very careful um, in, in drinking too much. It's important to note. Now, what's the connection between... We understand, okay, so we're not mixing... But, but, but what's the connection to Purim? So... The Maral says this concept, and the Alter Rebbe explains it a little bit in his Mamorim, that Purim is Yom Kippurim, it's like Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, we want to have an out-of-body experience. Now, the out-of-body experience is obviously, as the Gemara discusses in, 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 in Chagiga, that obviously Taita is all about doing, dealing with the physical world. We, 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 we want to be alive. We don't want to be out of our bodies. But at times we need to tap into a certain energy the, uh, to, to, in order to give us the vitality to um, properly influence the world. And in order to tap into certain levels of energy, we have to have, have this, this, this out-of-body experience, this Adela Yoda. Um, so in Yom Kippur, for example, we don't eat, we don't uh, do other things. Um, because we're tapping into this energy which where the body can be a distraction. Put him, this is a, the way the Alta Rebbe understands it, put him is, a, we're now in Golos. Put him is, it was a holiday that was established in the, the exile, um, in the times of Golos. So we need, in order to tap into this level of energy of Yom Kippur, shall we say, um, we need more than just refraining from eating, we have to totally like push the mind away with 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 alcohol or with wine to block out the the, 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 the body. Refraining from eating, that's not enough to we have to actually push away the mind in order to tap into that energy. Um and uh it's such a such a great um, energy that we need to have a we need to you know if you you could bring a little bit of an interesting example um, 
say you wanna sometimes you have to like shut all your windows in order to download a certain program um, you gotta like remove all the distractions in order to reach that level and then once you have that program you could open everything up and do what you need to do but sometimes you gotta like just tune everything out and zoom in to focus on what needs to be focused on so that's the put him is keep put him um, it's not just the not eating it's the pushing away the mind certain concepts of godliness are beyond our mind now the Rebbe in Lekut Yisich is Chelek Tazayim makes a very revolutionary um, conclusion um, and he says something along these lines the Gemara in Masech the Shabbos says that when the title was first given this is a little uh, controversial as to how exactly it's supposed to be understood, but clearly the title was pushed on to the Jewish people. It wasn't fully accepted, um, and it was... The, the God put a mountain over our heads, whatever that means. And put him, the Megillah says, that we accepted the title willingly. And that's the whole joy of put him, where... We're not just accepting the title because we're compelled to do it, but because we actually want to do it. And that's part of the joy of Purim. So when the Jews originally accepted the Torah, it says that the, 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 their souls left the body. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's what the Pesukim tell us. So the Altareb and Tanya explains that it wasn't just... It wasn't just by, you know, that, that was part of the... That was part of the... Part of what had to happen. Because when the Jews were accepting the Torah, when the Jews were receiving the Torah from God, in order for them, in order for their souls to tune into the Torah fully, they had to leave the restraints of their bodies and tap into the Torah and then come back into their bodies. So the Rebbe says, being that I'm put him, we're re-accepting the Torah, Kimu Vekiblu Ayehudim, Therefore, in order to do that properly, we have to have this. We have to have that our souls leave our body, that our that we push away the mind, and we experience the 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 energy without our mind distracting us. So l'chaim, we should learn a lot of chassidus and say a little bit of l'chaim, and we shouldn't have to say so much l'chaim. And the the uh, the energy should last us throughout the year, and we should reaccept the taita, and um, let the you know push our minds away a little bit to let the Torah the taita affect us in a deep personal way.